Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Magic the Gathering Arena here in 2023 in a complete beginner's guide. So I've made a brand new account called Dr. Incomp Tutorial, and I've started from scratch, and I told the game as I built my account that I had little to no experience with Magic the Gathering or MTG, and what that means is we're going to get a tutorial right when we boot up the game that's going to explain the basics to us. And what I thought I'd do is just make this new account and play along so that you can follow me if you're a new player, add my own commentary to the tutorial that's built into the game, and work on expanding our collection and going through the process of not only understanding the game, but understanding how it works in MTG Arena, how to play basics of magic that work for either the tabletop version or the digital version, uh, and explain everything that I can as a person who has been playing magic uh, since Unlimited. So I have, you know, decades of experience with this game. It's a fantastic game, and once you understand the basics, I think you'll enjoy it too, so let's go ahead. So the first thing that they're telling us to do in this tutorial is to play a land, okay? So what you'll notice is that we have a battlefield here. Uh, this magic is a collectible card game, meaning we're going to build a deck of cards, and we're going to play against another planeswalker, wizard, human opponent who also has a deck of cards, and... You'll see over here on the left, here's our deck, okay, with the cards face down. In the bottom center, this is our hand, the cards that we're holding. And we can see across the table from us, there's another Planeswalker. They have three cards in their hand. They have a deck here. And this eight that you see at the top of the screen is this opponent's life total. And my life total is seven drawn here. Now, the object of the game is to defeat your opponent most primarily by reducing their life points to zero, okay? Um, and uh, there are other ways to win the game. For example, if they run out of cards to draw, that can happen. Or there are cards that actually have conditions on them which say you win the game if you fulfill these requirements. But for the most part, you're trying to fight this other wizard planeswalker in a duel and defeat them by taking their life to zero. Now, to do that, we need to play spells, and we can't play spells unless we have the energy to do so. So our lands produce resources, mana, which is the energy we use to cast spells in Magic the Gathering. So you can see in my hand down here, the lands that they want us to play are highlighted with this blue border, and in general, in MTG Arena, the blue border means cards that you can play at the moment, or cards that are synergizing, potentially. Um, they highlight those kinds of cards for you. So if I mouse over this planes, okay, the card will blow up in MTG Arena, and you'll get a full view of it, all right? And it will tell you, with some tooltip pop-ups, that this is a land. And this is in the upper right, and it says lands add mana to cast spells. Exactly. And so this card does nothing but give us mana, okay? And every turn, if you have a land in your hand, you can play one land per turn, unless you have some card that lets you do more than that. So all I have to do is play this land, and it requires no energy or anything to do that. I just get to do it once per turn. And so I'm going to left click and drag this land up now when you i move it up you see that the border changes to orange meaning i'm going to activate this card and i'd simply let go of it Good. and i you put the land down lands to cast anything yet. so that's all you can do right now that's right so my turn is over because all i could do was play a land, a land so you can summon a creature all right, and so over here on the left, um, there is a little sprite, and she is the tutorial, the guide, and you can see she's moving over. She's like, hey, you need to play this land. Uh, there was also some dialogue she probably gave 
uh, when the game first booted up, but I wasn't yet recording, so you might hear her explain some things to you if you're just starting up. And they want us to play another land, which is the objective you see in the bottom right, okay? So I'm going to do exactly that. Now notice how when I play lands, okay, onto the battlefield, for the purposes of consolidating space and streamlining the presentation, the cards will shrink to just their portraits when they're on the battlefield, okay? So this is so the game can work on mobile and can be seen on smaller screens at different resolutions and things like that. So my planes is right here, and if I mouse over it, I'll see the full card, but you see it shrinks to just a planes over here. Now I'm going to pick up this card again. I'm going to just drag it up, and I'm going to let it go um, above my character's avatar in the bottom center, and it will play. Now, the game is explaining to you that this creature right here, the Shrine Keeper, it's a human cleric. You can see his picture right here. If I pay his casting cost, I can summon this cleric to my defense in this battle. And so you can see in the upper right, there are two planes symbols, this kind of sun, this means planes. And he costs two planes to play. And luckily, I have two planes. And they're telling me if I tap or activate my two planes, okay, the word in magic is tap to activate something, I will draw the power from the planes and be able to summon this creature to my defense. So all I have to do is go to my planes, okay, and I can um, left-click on it to activate it, or I can simply... Um, use the smart casting feature that is built into MTG Arena. And if I pick up one of my two Shrine Keepers, I can play either one. They are exactly the same. You'll notice that I can hold it up. And when I do that, he becomes orange because he's about to be summoned and activated. But also, you see how my planes become highlighted in orange because those will be used to cast this spell. So the game will like automatically use mana for me. Now you don't have to do it that way. You can always take full control and do this manually if you like, uh, but it's generally easier and faster when you have no other options to just do this. There's nothing else I could do. So I'm going to summon this creature and I'm gonna let it go above me. You'll see that these two lands become tapped. And now I get a creature. Now, what you'll notice, and the game kind of skipped through it, but first of all, one thing to say about this tutorial is that you are gated significantly until you get into the full game so that they can ease you into the mechanics. And so what I mean by that is normally at the beginning of a game, you're going to have 20 health and you're going to draw seven cards. But right now, we're just doing a very scripted tutorial where we have limited health, we have limited cards in our hands, uh, so that we can understand the basics. Now, it says we can play one land each turn. But what I want to do is go back to the previous turn. If you notice, my Shrine Keeper, when I dropped it into play, it had kind of um, a dark, shadowy circle over the portrait that was undulating and what that indicated was summoning sickness so what that means is when you summon a creature unless they have haste or say otherwise they can't do anything when they come into play they can't attack or be activated or tapped until the next round because they're just getting over the orientation process of being summoned uh, by your spell they can block but that's why I didn't get to do anything with my Shrine Keeper last turn. He's sick. Now he's ready to go. You'll see that that kind of indication has disappeared from him. And we can play a Plains, and so let's do that. Usually one of the first things you want to do when it's your turn, after you've drawn your card for the round, uh, and it's your main phase, is to play a, a land so that you can make sure you have all your land at your disposal. Um, to cast your spells. Now, you don't have to do that, of course, uh, but that's usually what you'll do. And I'm going to put my land down. Now I have three lands to use. Okay? Now they're telling me to summon a creature by dragging it onto the battlefield. Now, again, um, for the tutorial, that's what they want us to do. Um, and we're in main phase one right now, and what does that mean? Okay, so let's take a moment to pause and look at the bottom of the screen. In the bottom center... 
you'll notice that on either side of my avatar, there are these icons that are indicating what part of our turn we're on. Okay, so this highlighted card means this is main phase one, and you get two main phases. Okay, so you get a main phase where you can play things, cast spells, summon creatures, then you get an attack round. And then you get another main phase where you can summon things. Now, in the tutorial, they want us to summon this Shrine Keeper right now, okay? Um, but sometimes, if you're playing, a strategy would be to do your attacking first and then not summon this creature until main phase two so that your opponent doesn't know what you're planning and doesn't know that you're going to summon another creature. They might think that you're going to use this mana for the cards in your hand, which could impact the battle in some way. So they are just left um, with less information, which you generally want to do. Um, but for now, we're just going to play this cards because they want us to. So we're going to play another Shrine Keeper. We automatically tap two lands. Okay. And she's explaining what I just talked about, which is summoning sickness. So this kind of shadowy circle means that this guy can't attack because he has just been summoned. All right. And it says here creatures can't attack on their first turn. Okay. So now it's time for us to move into the attack phase. Okay. And in the attack phase, we get to select which creatures we want to attack our opponent with. It says, click on each creature you want to attack with. Creatures can't attack their first turn, all right? So notice over here on the right, in terms of the phases, we're on the first part of the attack phase. So the attack phase is broken up into different sub-phases. So there's declare attackers, which is the first part of this, which means I want to attack with this. So I'm going to click on the Shrine Keeper, all right? He's highlighted in blue, meaning he's able to attack, and he's got this up arrow moving toward the opponent, like meaning I want to go over there and attack. So I click on him, and he will raise up at this point to indicate he is part of the attack, that I've declared him as an attacker, okay? And then he turns orange, meaning he's about to participate in the attack, the uh, arrow also changes colors to indicate that. And right now, we're going to attack directly uh, Kylia, our opponent, because she has no creatures out to block. She has no blockers. And so if someone doesn't have any blockers on their side and you attack, you are going to deal damage directly to them. Okay? Now, how much damage are we going to do to them? Well, it says right here on our Shrine Keeper, okay? So I'm going to mouse over the Shrine Keeper and blow up the card again. We already talked about in the upper right is the casting cost, how much this costs to bring into play. You only need to pay that cost one time, the first time you summon the creature, and then you're done. Now, at the bottom right, however, there is also a, a 2 slash 2 that you see, and that is the power and toughness of the creature. So you'll see there's a sword icon on the left and a shield icon on the right. And that indicates basically this creature deals two damage and it has two toughness or hit points that it can take before it dies. So if we attack and she doesn't block, the Shrine Keeper will deal two damage to Kylia. All right. So before we do that, though, we have to declare attackers. And so... Um, we just click this button right here that says one attacker, okay, to kind of commit. And then we move to the next phase. They're telling us that this is our creature's power, which is two. Our toughness is two. And we're going to smash into Kylia, and we did two damage. Now, activating for that. our Shrine Keeper to attack with them taps them, just like we tapped our land. And you'll see this kind of... Um, symbol that's a curved line with an arrow on it, that means that the creature is tapped. And in Magic the Gathering, usually you tap your creatures at a 90-degree um, angle. But in MTG Arena, you only kind of like partially tap them, almost at like 45 degrees. You barely twist them, but the you'll see clearly what has been used and what hasn't, okay? Now, if a creature is tapped because you attacked with it, then it cannot block, okay? So now what they're telling us to do is summon um, this creature. Now, she has summoned the Treetop Warden, 
which is a 2-2 elf warrior. In the middle part of the card, you will see what type of card it is. It's a creature, okay? It's got summoning sickness, which is the current effect on the card because she just summoned it. It can't attack. And it's a 2-2 just like our shrine keepers. It has two power and two toughness. In the upper right, you'll see the summoning cost or the casting cost for this card was one tree, which is a forest, which is all she has mana-wise. And then there's a circle that's gray with a one. That means that you can pay any type of mana to fulfill that casting requirement. Now, she has only green forest mana, so that's okay. Um, but she used two to summon this out, all right? So, again, they want us to summon our creature in main phase one. And this Loxodon Linebreaker is a 3-2. So it's slightly bigger. It costs more mana to cast, but it has three power, meaning it's going to do some more damage. Now, again, you'll see in the upper right of its casting cost, the two in the gray circle means two of any type of mana. If I had, like, green mana on my own side, forests on my own side, then I could use two of those forests, but I am required to use one planes for the planes symbol. Right now, I only have planes, so I'll just pick this up and play it, tapping all of my land to do so. So you can see all of my land is tapped, it's all been used, and now it's time to attack. I, of course, can't attack with my Loxodon Linebreaker because he has Summoning Sickness. We just cast him, but I can attack with both of these Shrine Keepers. Now... In this situation, Kylia has the option to block with her Treetop Warden, all right? She can block whichever Shrine Keeper she chooses. So when I'm going into the attack, in Magic the Gathering, I get to choose who I attack with, but the defender gets to choose what they block with and who they block, all right? So I don't know that information. I can assume that they will block, but I don't know. So let's see what's going to happen. I'm going to declare my attackers. And she has declared blocking with the treetop warden. We've been blocked. All right. So these creatures are going to fight. They both deal their power to each other at the same time, simultaneously. And we both will die as a result of this combat. So the shrine keeper does two damage to the warden and the warden does two damage to the shrine keeper. They can only sustain two damage because that's how much toughness they have. So this is basically going to wipe both of these out. Ah, admirable. Pity I have to crush you. I hope not. Oh, okay. So she summoned a big creature, a 4-4, four, four, big time blocker. Big problem. It is a big problem. So in this case, she summoned a 4-4, okay? Now, something we need to understand is that um, unless a creature has first strike or some other ability, damage is dealt simultaneously, okay? Now, you can only block one creature with one creature unless you have something that says otherwise. So if I were to attack with both of my creatures, they could block either one with the Rumbling Bayloth and... What they probably do is block my Loxodon because it does more damage, and I would get two damage through. But what would happen is their Rumbling Bailoff would deal four damage to my Linebreaker and kill it, and I would only do three damage to their 4-4. Four, four. And at the end of uh, the round, their creature is going to get its health back. All creatures regain toughness if they haven't been killed. So what that would mean is their rumbling Bayloth um, is going to recover, regenerate all of that health, and I'm going to be left with a 2-2 and them with a 4-4. So I'm going to play my planes. That beast will destroy your creatures if you attack now. But I'm not going to attack, as she tells me. Hey, if you attack right now, you're just going to lose your creatures. So um, if we had lethal damage, like if we attacked with both, and even if they blocked, we would kill them, well, then of course we would attack. But because we don't have lethal, we need to hold back and block. So we're going to say no attacks. We're going to click the blue button to end the combat phase and end our turn. You've shown spirit, but I will show you strength. Uh-oh. So she's done feral roar, and it says target creature gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. 
and it says a spell has made this creature stronger temporarily okay Stand your ground. One of your creatures can block it. so in this case i'm going to mouse over the card in her graveyard remember you can mouse over anything that you want and the graveyards which are the discard piles in magic the gathering they go to the left of your deck um now it's to the right up here but from her orientation it's to the left and it's public knowledge, this discard pile. So I can click on it and see all of the cards that I have played and they have played. And you can always just mouse over to see what's going on in the game. So I'm going to mouse over Feral Roar for a moment. Now this is a sorcery spell. A sorcery is a spell that you use it once, it has an effect, and then it goes into the graveyard. Creatures, you summon them and they sit on the battlefield until they're killed. Um, or something removes them. But this spell is just something that happens at sorcery speed. So sorcery is a spell that you can only cast on your turn. Um, and it's a slow spell. It, it cannot be cast as a reaction. Um, but it's temporarily giving their creature plus four, plus four. And you'll hear me say plus four, plus four a lot. You don't really pronounce the slash in... Um, shorthand when you're talking about MTG, so that means four power and four toughness. Now you can see their creature was normally a 4-4, four, four, but the blue numbers indicate that their stats have been augmented by that spell, so they've been improved, and it's only temporary. So they're telling us to block, click or drag one of your creatures into an attacking creature. So I cannot take 8 damage right now. That will kill me. I only have 7 health. So I have to block right here. But the fantastic thing about blocking, unless the creature that you're blocking has trample or a different ability, you block all of the damage with your creature. And this is going to be a technique that is called chump blocking. Okay, so when you chump block, you basically try to block something of theirs with your weakest creature just to run and stand in the way and take one for the team i don't want to block with my loxodon linebreaker right here because either of these creatures are going to die and they're not going to kill this so this is my better creature so i want this creature to survive so i'm just going to block with my shrine keeper i'm going to left click on it because we are in the declare blockers phase so it's their turn during their combat and they have declared this as an attacker. And for the first time, we get to actually block. So now it's our turn to declare blockers. And I'm going to click the Shrine Keeper. And then when you do that, the Shrine Keeper gets highlighted in orange to indicate that she's going to be a blocker. And you see this blue arrow appear, which is like asking for a target to block. And I'm going to select the Bayloth with left click. And now... You can see before you commit, okay, before you decide that this is what you want to do, you can kind of visually just check and make sure everything looks good. Yes, they're going to try to attack, and it's going to go, you can see the arrow, it's going to go right into my Shrine Keeper. And my Shrine Keeper will block all of this damage, and I will take none. So I'm going to say yes, please, one blocker in the lower right. I'm going to click on that. Bam. And even a small creature will block all damage. And that's why it's called chump blocking. You put that chump out there Take down that beast while it's still recovering. to um, basically protect our wizard or planeswalker from dying instantly. Now it's telling us that we can cast a sorcery spell of our own. So they cast a sorcery spell on their turn. And during your main phase, you can cast a sorcery spell. You cannot cast a sorcery spell in the combat phase. You can only cast it during your main phase because it's a slow spell. It takes a while to build up. What does this spell do? It says, destroy target tapped creature, okay? Um, and so you can also, by the way, I'm using the mouse over to make the card large but you can right click on the card and you see how the card has appeared over on the left of our screen and is gigantic you can really get a good look at a card like this i like to do this personally just because i think the artwork in mtg is fantastic so i like to just take a look at it and this card is called take vengeance it costs one of any mana and one planes to use it's a sorcery meaning it's something i can only cast on my my turn in my main phase one or two and it says destroy target tapped creature. Um, it also has, you can see there's a quote that's coming out from it in the upper right. 
it has some flavor text. That's just description that adds some lore and story to the game that's not essential but just fun. And it says, your death will be a balm. You're passing a welcome revision and all will sigh with peace to know of your demise. Ouch. So that's what we're doing. We're having um, this angel come and blast this Baloth away. So destroy is shorthand in it's a keyword in magic the gathering there's many keywords and there are compendiums of these that you can use within the game or on wikis online to understand all the terminology and that is a keyword that means you're going to basically kill a creature which means instantly take it to zero health like no matter how many hit toughness it has it's dead unless um it has something that makes it immune to being destroyed okay so we're going to kill target tapped creature. The Baloth is tapped from attacking. You can see when I mouse over it um, in the upper right, it says it's tapped. Okay, so I'm going to left click on take vengeance so I can cast it. I'm going to just kind of bring it up here. By the way, you don't have to hold and drag. I like to do it, but you can just click once and pull it up and then click again. All right. And now we're going to cast this spell and we are attempting to cast the spell and it's asking, who do you want to target with this spell? And again, we have this arrow and we're just going to click on their creature to confirm it. All right. And so we tap lands You're not making this easy. to destroy their creature by casting the spell and they had no response it hit their creature and boom it's gone now we can attack clearly they have no blockers so you can either click on your loxodon line breaker to attack or you can go in the bottom right and just say all attack which means give me all my creatures let's go and i'm going to say attack bam so now we've got kylia down to one health which is awesome all right, and they've summoned. We've got you cornered. Cast the spell. Clear a path to finish her. So she has summoned two treetop wardens on her turn. She's got no cards left in her hand. How many cards people have in their hand is um, public knowledge. It's visible. You don't know, of course, what they are. They're face down, but you can see above her. She's got no cards in her hand. That's where her hand would display. She's tapped out. This is very important in magic. If somebody is tapped out. That means they can't do anything for the most part because they have no energy or mana to spend on spells. They also, they're tapped out, no cards in their hand, so they have very limited options. Now, we just drew a card, which is Blinding Radiance. I'm going to right-click on it and bring it up, and it says, Tap all creatures your opponents control with toughness two or less. Okay? So, uh, this spell costs two of any mana. Two colorless mana is what we call it which means just any mana type, um, and a planes, and it's a sorcery that we can cast on our turn. Now this over here, this little symbol just means what set it's from, so it'll be different based on what set it's from, and the color coding, this is silver, indicates that this is an uncommon card. You'll see white, which is common, silver, um, gold for rare, and kind of a deep uh, orangey gold for legendary. And in this case, um, this is an uncommon card for what it's worth. Now, this spell is going to tap all of her creatures. And if we do that, okay, because their, their toughness for both of her treetop wardens is two, so it fills this requirement of two or less. When her creatures are tapped, they cannot block. So this will make it so she can't block and our Loxodon will go through and kill. So let's go ahead. We're going to cast Blinding Radiance. You'll see that both her creatures tapped. Okay. And now we'll just click all attack and we'll do it. Bam. Well, fought, outsider. well thank you so much. Sure, she's taken down. How about that? So we won our first match. And we can click to continue. Ooh, all right. Shiny. shiny indeed. So we've, we've now unlocked... unlocked a new card so we've unlocked this spiritual guardian card all right and it is a three four and when it enters the battlefield we get some life so it heals us great 
Yeah, good work back there. Well, thank you so much. But if you're going to battle another planeswalker, you've got to be prepared for anything. You sure do. So we do have to be prepared. On Ravnica that can teach you everything you need to know about tactics. Awesome. Especially what not to do. Hmm. Awesome. Okay, so we battled our first Planeswalker and we won. And what's going on here in the tutorial when you first boot up is that you're going to get several stages that you're going to go through and you're going to learn the game. And the game is really cool because... Um, we're going to unlock more cards and decks as we go. Now, all of these opponents that we're going to be facing are AI, computer-controlled opponents, and we'll have this tutorial um, sprite with us until we finish. Now, for the purposes of this beginner's guide, I'm going to do this in installations, and we're going to be completely free to play. I'm not going to spend any money on the game um, so that you can see what it would be like to go into it as a free-to-play player and see what's available to you if you choose that path. Now, if you like the game, of course, you know, you can spend money on the battle pass or buy packs or cosmetics or whatever you like, um, but you can certainly get a fair glance at the game. It's free to download and free to try out if you're interested. So this is a good place to end this first episode of our beginner's guide because we've completed the first stage of this tutorial. Next time, we'll go ahead and work through the tutorial more, explaining more concepts, how to play the game so that you can be off and running and enjoying Magic the Gathering Arena or learn how to just play regular Magic the Gathering, the card, physical card game with your friends. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please post those in the comments below, and I'd love to help you out. Take care.